Spot Devices by GlobalStar uses second-generation satellite technology that allows customers to track themselves and their assets, send messages, and contact search and rescue. Spot Trace is the theft alarm tracker that monitors the movement and location. Spot Gen 3 lets off-the-grid adventurers send messages, track movement, and call for help. Spot by GlobalStar, satellite technology. Support for WYES is made possible by Mary Lou Kristovich in memory of her husband, William Kristovich. Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Stepping Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, actor and director and playwright Ricky Graham, who is this year's recipient of our annual Celeste Udell Arts Award. Glad to see you. Congratulations. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> we're thrilled you're here. And we're thrilled Ian McNulty is here, food writer for the New Orleans Advocate and so much more. Okay. Oh, right. John Kemp, art columnist for Louisiana Life Magazine and the author of a brand new new book that we'll be talking about. Great. Yay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And stepping out, theater critic Alan Mason. He is also the editor of the Crescent City Jewish News. But first up, John. Oh, me first. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, there are an extraordinary number of art shows up and around the city, but there were four particular I wanted to point out. One is in the Bywater section at the New Orleans Art Center. It's called the Louisiana Photography Biennial by none other than our friend Don Marshall, who's back on the, on the art scene again. Remember last year he did the Biennial La Femme the painting of the women, but now he's chosen 80 photographers from all over Louisiana, and it's his A-list. He brings those who have international recognition as well as those who are sort of the emerging photographers on the scene. It's an excellent show. And Herman Crone and Tina Duran, they're the owners and directors of the gallery, and they did a terrific job in that, in that part of town in, in the contemporary art. The second show I wanted to mention is at the Ogden Museum of Southern Art on Camp Street in the Arts District. Uh, Simon Gunning. It's called Simon Gunning in the Southern Landscape. Now Simon is the Australian-born New Orleans uh, artist and he's, he's really one of the city's premier landscape painters, terrific painter. And he does everything from everything from river scenes and the marshes to the gritty inner street, city streets of New Orleans. So his work's very powerful and very strong. And he's a bywater guy. Speaking of bywater, he's one of the pioneers in the bywater yeah. section too. Yeah, he's, he's down there. In fact, he he bought two houses. One was his for his father, who was visiting from Australia, and then he turned his father went back to Australia, so he turned it into his studio mm. down there. But uh, he, he does some some magnificent work. Yes. Um, so and the third one, uh, talking about landscape. It's called Seeing Nature, the Landscape Masterworks in the Paul Allen Family Collection. This is the New Orleans Museum of Art. Um, it's 39 masterpiece uh, paintings that explore the evolution of landscape painting in Europe and in America. Uh, they, they go all the way from the 16th century uh, with the Bruegels all the way to George O'Keefe for the 20th century. And Gustav Klimt, John? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And, yeah, that's very rare, you know, <laughs> yeah, for him doing say. landscapes. He's mostly his portraits and everything, so it's very rare. It's, it's, it's a beautiful piece, it draws you in. And I was looking at the show today, in fact, the, the curator of the show, Vanessa Schmidt, gave me a tour of the exhibit today, and we were talking about Klimt's uh, uh, his, his, his uh, portraits, but you look at this forest and the birch trees, you know, each tree is sort of a portrait of that tree, yet it's in a landscape setting. Um, it, it, it's a really excellent show. And this Paul, um, see, Paul um, uh, Allen, of course, is the co-founder of Microsoft, okay. and he's used his fortune to build this, uh, this collection. And well, this is only 39 of an even larger collection of master paintings. So um, definitely see this one. And if you get a chance, go to Noma's website because uh, Vanessa will be giving uh, tours and walkthrough mm. gallery tours of the show and also lectures about the evolution of landscape painting in the West. So, and, and she gave me one today, it was terrific. Mm. <laughs> uh, so I, I definitely suggest you do that. And uh, the fourth show, it's uh, back in the Arts District on Julia Street, uh, another New Orleanian. Uh, Margaret Evangeline, or Evangeline, <laughs> it's at the Jonathan Ferrara Gallery. Uh, it's called The Invisible Side of the Universe. And uh, uh, Margaret was a New Orleans a UNO graduate in 1978, got her MFA here in New Orleans, went on to New York, become an internationally f uh, famed artist in the avant-garde contemporary art movement there. And this, new, this whole new series of work that she's done here 
and it's uh, sort of her interpretation of Einstein's gravitational wave theory. We have a big superconductor up in Livingston Parish that's doing all kind of work on gravitational pull. So she's, through her own imagination, is doing this whole series of paintings based on that theory. All right. Good work. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. We love those UNO grads. Yes, we do. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> and Ian, you've been a, uh, a man about town, as you usually are, but some tried and true, new takes on some tried and true, if you will. Yeah, that's right. I think, yeah, I think a lot of people out there can, can relate to this experience. If you lived in New Orleans for a long time, you go over to a friend's house when they've just moved, or you go to some new acquaintance from work, you go to their house for the first time, and you walk in the door and you realize, I've been in this house before, mm. under the previous owner, or somebody rented this years back. Well, I've been having that experience all around town, going to some of these restaurants. There are, they're not, some of them are new, some of them are revived. It's a little mix of both, as we'll see. And we're starting with the most recent revival, in this case, for Cafe Sibiza. This is a place uh, yeah. down in Decatur Street, right across from the Joan of Arc statue, right there by Joni on a pony. And it, this is a <laughs> restaurant. Wow. Yes, it's just <laughs> soaked with history. You walk yeah. in and this feels like old New Orleans. But these are familiar faces. If you remember Cafe Sibiza before Katrina, that's Chef Alfred Singleton. He was the chef there before Katrina. That's Craig Napoli, his uh, business partner now. He used to be his boss. Now they're, they're partners in reviving the old Cafe Sabiza. They have, uh, it's Creole food for sure, and they have some old favorites from the, uh, the pre-Katrina days. The Oyster Sabiza is one of them. Uh, but a few more modern touches as well. So really nice spot for brunch if you're having a day in the quarter. Uh, just, like I guess, say, soaked with history. Such an interesting building and so good to see uh, just one of those, those those doorways opening up again on Decatur Street to a really mm -hmm. nice grand setting. Another one, uh, this is a much different story, but again, I think some people will be very familiar with the building. Uh, if you remember the old Christian's restaurant in the church in Mid-City, uh, that's on North Scott, uh, right off of Canal. This was for a long, long time an old grand Creole restaurant. Well, now it's Vessel, and it's a much different story on the inside. As you can see, it's been reconfigured with that long bar. It's as much a restaurant as it is a lounge, and it's a great place to go with a few people to share a few things. The food, I've been very impressed with it. It's, it's a modern Mediterranean style. It's much lighter than, uh, than what you might be expecting. Uh, across the map, it, it really good, fresh flavors, a little different spin to it. Uh, it makes sense. It's, uh, and it's, a, it's a fun social place, like I say. It's a, it's a good place to go with a few people, even for a drink and a few plates. And then finally, the Pontchartrain Hotel. This is a place that came back uh, a little earlier in the summer with all of its restaurants and a few surprises as well. Now, if Cafe Sibiza was bringing back an old place and Vessel was transforming an old place, uh, the new Pontchartrain <laughs> Hotel is sort of a combination of those two stories. And Phil Melanson's back. Phil Melanson's back at the Bayou Bar. This is part of, the, part of the hotel. This is their casual tavern with the piano in the corner. Uh, just a, a good place to hang, get a casual view of it all. But you'll, no matter what you're coming here for, you're gonna wanna take a look around, take a walk. Now we're coming into the Caribbean room. This is the sort of the lounge right outside of the main dining room. As you can see, this has been up, done, redone in a, a, a very modern way, but with a nostalgic wink. And uh, the, the food kind of follows, follows suit. Um, the chef here, Chris Glusk, is doing a great job balancing uh, a tough act, too, between these old classics that people remember, but uh, modern tastes, because you know you can't have a, a, a new restaurant solely trafficking in these old, old dishes. We just saw the Mile High Pie there. That's, of course, the classic. Mm. And then finally, up on the rooftop, oh. that's the hot tin roof bar. That's a, a brand new addition and very timely. It's one of the great Not views Mr. of the Tennessee city right Williams. there. That's right, <laughs> indeed. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely, my pleasure. And New Orleans Magazine's Quiz Queen, Julia Street, has a question for us. Last time, Barbara Sprott told us at what city that is a tunnel while traveling east on the I-10 to the Florida Panhandle, and also named the first city in Florida that would be Mobile and then Pensacola. Now tonight's question. A French Quarter Blues Club is named after this late blues singer. Name the singer and, of course, the name of his guitar. Hmm. Mm. Email your mm. answers to Stephen at WYS.org. Our prizes. Tonight we have an April that has Walk for the Cure from our friends at wearablevegetables.com. Yes, indeed. Proceeds go to the Susan G. Komen Cancer Research Foundation. We also have a pair of free admission passes to either the Audubon Zoo, Aquarium of Americas, or the Butterfly Garden and Insectarium.
By the way, the Ottoman Zoo Celebration Latina is this Sunday from 11 to 4. And don't forget, Kitchen Witch is still doing their Friday night sip and shop event. Kitchen Witch is hosting a book signing for Southern Recipes with a French Accent with author Jennifer Hill Booker. That's next Friday from 5 to 7. And you can visit WYS.org for our online calendar to see our lineup of events, including upcoming airings of the brand new WYS Chef Paul Prudhomme documentary, which you happen to be in, oh, well. and the Andouille <laughs> Festival in Laplace. And you can also link to our WYS YouTube channel to our program. Well, tonight we are so excited because we at WIS are honored to present the Celeste Udell Award, civic activist and so involved with both the performing and the visual arts. <laughs> Our dear friend Celeste passed away in 2010. She was also a longtime volunteer for this show. She's a beautiful lady. Oh, my goodness. And previous recipients include Barbara Motley of Chat Noir, Mrs. Dorothy Coleman, Albinus Presentes, and last year, Walda and Sydney Bestoff. And this year, we bestow the award to Ricky Graham, Ooh. actor, producer. <laughs> How did I get into such <laughs> august company? And so much more. And, oh, and, this and, is beautiful. and even though Ricky oh. looks like a little kid, he's actually had an over 45 years. Career. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is beautiful. This is just beautiful. And we're going to go down memory lane with some images, oh, but let's good. talk, okay? And we got okay. real champagne, so this is fine. I know. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Uh, and cheers. Let thank us you, toast. Oh, please. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Let us toast. Ooh, see, nice glasses, too. We got all the good now, stuff now, out Ricky, today. I think, if I recall correctly, it all oh, started yeah. at North Theater. It did. It was, I think at it was. the bottom of Gallier Hall. Right, so it was, I think it was 1966. Was that the year after Betsy? It was the year after yes. Betsy. And my parents said, please, we found something for you to do. This North Theater, anything to get you out of the house and stop singing songs from My Fair Lady. <laughs> well, little did we know. Exactly. And look at that, Maria Arroyo, Terry, Terry Gervais on the side. And look at it. Oh, there's me with, with, with white shoe, with white Thank shoe you polish the in my hair. For this <laughs> oh, wow. The greatest thing look was Maria Ty Tracy, too. who uh -huh. is uh, the head of North Theater and, and shaped so many people people's lives. Uh -huh. uh, and I, th I thought I was so British, you know, I was, you know, Louisa Street, Nine Ward Child, I thought I was so British. <laughs> so we, we were, uh, we're doing a uh, scene, I said, oh yes, oh yes, Pickering, we're going to, we're going to write it down, then we'll make records of it. And he went, records! <laughs> <laughs> records, you want to be British. <laughs> a little off, off tune from, from Rex, but you have played so many roles. It's one thing to act, but I, when I first met you, because um, I am thrilled to say that I attended my, the first play ever, the Nord Summer Workshop, oh, yes. and it was a musical version of Ernest and Love. I mean, it's a musical version of Importance of Being Earnest, Ernest and Love. Ernest and Love, right. And I meet him, he's designing and painting the sets, oh. and he also has one of the leads. I do. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, I, I uh, you're very versatile. Too. And you just, <laughs> oh, I, just, I don't think I even knew that. <laughs> okay. Yes, but what an opportunity at Nord. And then on to other theaters, of course, too, during the years. But then you also write plays. Well, the, the the thing is, I got to the point, my, my friend Becky Allen is here, she was my ride today. Uh, uh, what a studio audience. <laughs> um, the thing is, I got to the point where they weren't doing shows for my particular talents, and then uh, Becky and uh, Freddie Pomizano oh, yes. and I decided to just start doing our own stuff. We started writing our own cabaret shows, and, and uh, then full-length book shows, and that's how it all started. It was a necessity. It wasn't ego. It was economics. So. Well, you are actually, you're making a living here doing, uh, yeah, for the most part, I think. Yeah, <laughs> so, for the most part, um, right. So, yeah, yeah you yeah. know, I mean, being an actor, playwright, not many people can say well, that. Well, you have to do everything. It's yeah. like, my, my favorite quote is from the, the Red Queen and Through the Looking Glass, and she says, you know, um, what a very slow country here. We have to do all the running we can to stay in one place, and that's exactly <laughs> what you yeah. have to do mm -hmm. here. You know, you can't just say, well, I'm going to be an actor. Well, you know, act and write and direct and, and, and do some design work uh -huh. and also produce. And But the, the thing is, this city has just been, you know, so supportive, you know, beyond supportive, you know. Well, and, um, would you and, say it was a trove of inspiration mm -hmm. for your characters? Well, perhaps? yeah. You yeah. Had, you've done so many. You're probably mm -hmm. based in New Orleans, oh, of yeah, course. Yeah. 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 Not everything I do is New no. Orleans, but the most no. successful stuff I do is, mm -hmm. is when I'm true to my my. Ninth Ward uh, upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Well, the next show I'm going to do is with my 
uh, good friend uh, Jeff Robeson, also known as Virgin Merman, and yes. Sean Patterson and um, uh, Jefferson Turner were doing a musical takeoff called Steel Poinsettias. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's everything that it implies. And uh, that's going to be at Rivertown for our friends uh, uh, Gary and Kelly out at Rivertown. Well, we're so thrilled. And we needed to point out, though, this is the, the award is actually, it is made for Ricky, by, and it's Mark it's so Rosenbaum of Rose Tree Gallery. He has a wonderful place in Algiers Point. It's an old movie theater. If you haven't had a chance, go and visit. Lots of beautiful things, but congratulations. Thank you so much. We're what an so honor. Thank you. We are so beautiful. We're honored that you're here. <laughs> and now, though, it's time for our artist spotlight. We are featuring John Kemp's brand new book, Expressions of Place, the Contemporary Louisiana Landscape. And I'm going to hold it up here, again, to show you just how large it is and how magnificent. We'll be showing some images. But John, congrats. Thank so you. 37 Thank you. Thank artists? 37 artists from all over Louisiana. A little over mm -hmm. 200 paintings in there that sort of range from the almost abstract to the romantic realism. But, but in essence, really, all of the landscapes, they're really sort of the landscapes of the imaginations of the it's artists themselves. It's not just themselves. rural, it's the urban landscape, too. Well, it, it's urban, it's, it's, <laughs> it's coastal marshes, the piney hills of North Louisiana, the prairie of, of, of central Louisiana. Uh, it's, it's all of Louisiana, and how those artists interpret their own landscape. And I say it's, it's more like sort of interpretation of landscapes with their imagination, how they, how they see the world around them. Mm. Mm. Now, um, Melissa Smith, uh, Billy Solitario, oh, it's an Billy illustrious Sol yeah, bunch. And, yeah, Ron Bichet, all of them, they're all in this book, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, has this been sort of over the years you've been thinking about this book? How did this come together? You've done many books, but you know. Yeah, I've, I've, you know, I've been writing about New Louisiana and Southern artists for right. 35 years now, I guess. And um, it's and writing monographs about individual artists, but all this time I thought, you know, I need to do something about what these artists are saying about the landscape. Uh, and so, and because each one has their own personal interpretation, it could be about the ecology, the human footprint, or just the, the beautiful landscape they want to interpret, as 19th century artists did in Louisiana. Well, you are looking um, ahead this weekend. You have a book signing. Yes, actually the first one, the premiere. Yay. It's at uh, Garden District Books from one to three. That's in the rink on Britannia Street from one to three tomorrow, Saturday. Very exciting. And um, what you were sharing with me is the fact, though, is that uh, there are numerous art exhibits. Bits with, involved with these artists that would be taking place around the state. Right, too. well, we did. In, Great in, idea. In addition to bookstores, we wanted to do was to promote the artists themselves. So we're going to have book signings around the state at the artist gallery so they can actually show their work right. at the same time as we talk about the book. Wow. So it goes Monroe, Shreveport, Alexander, Natchitoches, Baton Rouge, all Great. over. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Alan, a man about town yourself. Well, I wanted to let everybody know, first off, uh, we got word earlier this week yeah. that Perry Martin is out as uh, the uh, artistic director at the Bayou Playhouse in Lockport. He was, of course, the founding Sorry artistic director. That. I believe it was basically artistic differences with the board. Uh, he is in good health still, and uh, we're looking forward to new things from him. Dane Rhodes is going to be stepping in there giving them an assist. <laughs> um, now, meanwhile, fresh off a Broadway run, a successful one at that, Southern Rep and the University of New Orleans are teaming together to bring Lisa de Amour's Airline Highway, a, a tale uh, about a group of New Orleans misfits in search of family. Um, but the cast includes Lance Nichols, uh, a down wow. on his luck uh, handyman. The action takes place basically in the parking lot of the Hummingbird Hotel, a disheveled, uh, previously nice place where the strippers, <laughs> alcoholics, uh, drug abusers and lost denizens find themselves. Now here's director uh, Amy Hayes and the playwright Lisa Dia Moore. Uh, of course, Lisa took this show to Broadway. She received several Tony nominations for it. Lisa's own brother, Todd Dia Moore, and Elizabeth Daniels uh, are in it. Uh, he plays Bait Boy, who is a former karaoke uh, worker, and Krista, a stripper. Uh, former lovers are reunited, and again, their affair reignited. Uh, everybody is coming here to celebrate Miss Ruby, who of course is played by Janet Shea. She's sort of a mother figure to them all, as it uh, might be a, a great device by Lisa. Uh, the inhabitants are throwing essentially a living funeral for her benefit. They're all coming together to wish her well as she is dying. Uh, Shivas Michael plays a transgender named, you'll love this, Sissy Nana. And uh, it's in the tradition of Big Frida and others. Uh, Shivas uh, is seen here with J Janet, of course, whose character descends from that second floor of the hotel, much like uh, a queenly figure on a royal litter. It's an amazing 
thing. Airline Highway has some other uh, great characters. Wayne, uh, uh, of course, is Carl Palmer, and Tanya, they have sort of a thing going between the two of them. Tanya's a former stripper, and she kind of organizes this whole party for Miss Ruby. Lisa DeMore also invokes the uh, image, if you will, of uh, Danny Kerwick, who's a real-life poet here in New Orleans, and here he's seen with Thomas Francis Murphy, the film actor you may remember from The Free State of Jones with uh, Michael yes. McConaughey not too long ago. Uh, he's returning to the stage because of this. There's much to be admired here. Probably the best second act opening you've ever seen with all of the uh, characters on stage uh, dancing to the uh, tune of Little Eyes of Jane, the traditional brass band <laughs> ditty. Uh, they also include, believe it or not, some James Booker and the Wobble. So you've got all kinds of divergent New Orleans music in there. The references of the city are peppered throughout. And, and I really did enjoy this. There you know, are some interesting things about it. Uh, there's an additional advice, a device of a character named Zoe, who is a stranger. And of course, they have to explain certain things to her character. So that's a great device as well. <laughs> it allows outsiders to be more drawn into it fully. Airline Highway runs through October the 23rd. I think it's a, a really uh, very involved script, and I think people will enjoy it. University of New Orleans Performing Arts Center. And again, you'll see that at the NIMS Theater. Meanwhile, at the BB Stage Door Canteen, I have to tell you, I had an opportunity to see what I think is probably the role of a lifetime for Courtney Bow. That is the victory bell at the National World War II she's Museum. Gorgeous. Who's been absolutely, you know, she's been so striking. The the platinum blonde. She was literally born to play this role. And again, this is a, a piece that was done by uh, Kevin Hallman. He directs and writes the the book. Of course, there are a little, you know, a couple of problems with the book because how can you put an entire lifetime of a screen star into an hour and a half? But in short, this is the role that Courtney was born to play. And she can sing. She's so she, she talented. She can sing. Ellen. She has a smile that radiates off the stage. Uh, she's supported on stage, by the way, by an exceptional cast, including mm -hmm. Seth Lieber as Ray Anthony, Curtis Billings as Daryl Zanuck, and Bob Hope, Edward Simon as Joe DiMaggio, <laughs> Kevin Roethlisberger as Arthur Miller, and also Emily Rose Guyon does some, uh, several of the smaller female roles. Most of them sing and dance to the great American songbook songs such as Straighten Up and Fly Right, uh, This Will Be My Shining Hour, Jezebel, and My Marilyn. It's a role, I, again, and I say that Courtney has obviously trained many, many long hours for. Uh, you know, She does an outstanding version of Diamonds or A Girl's Best Friend. It truly nails this role. She's obviously worked very, very hard, you know, as, as a person to give you uh, some sense of the role as a woman who's trying to succeed in Hollywood and also as a person who's trying to be more or less recognized for her work as an artist. Uh, this will be, unfortunately, the last production for Courtney. Uh, she is going to be moving on. Uh, she's announced that uh, this will be the last thing. And Victoria Reed, of course, the entertainment director, wanted to make sure she went off with a bang. And I'm looking forward to having other people go and enjoy this as well. Pictures of Maryland runs through November the 28th. Now, last night was also opening night for another one. This is the Toxic Avenger. This is the See Him On Stage production that they're doing, which basically was taken from a comic book. It was made into a film and, of course, now into a musical, off-Broadway musical originally. It did garner a lot of, inf inf I guess, interesting uh, uh, takes on it. The uh, Toxic Avenger is Kevin Murphy. He plays Melvin Ferd, who is a nerd, if you will, tossed into a vat of toxic water only to become the Toxic Avenger. Um, the Toxic Avenger also starts as Elise McDaniel's a blind librarian, Sarah, who falls in love with him. Uh, there are many jokes and foils about her being blind, of course. Janie Heck <laughs> plays a sensational dual role as both the evil mayor of Traumaville, New Jersey, and as Melvin's mother. And uh, Eli, Tim, and Luke Halpern kind of round out the staff there. Uh, again, I would tell you that, that this cast is, is very funny. It's flat out hilarious with good music and hysterical lyrics. And there's a live band playing, three-piece band, every night. Uh, it's not for youngsters, but there are some moments that will bring out about a lot of hilarity. And Janie Heck's second act duet with herself is something that you must see. There is, by the way, a splatter zone. Keep that in mind. If you want to sit up front, you got to pay a little bit more to get splattered. Believe it or not, you don't pay less, you pay more. Okay. And that's going to be at uh, the theater in St. Claude through the end of October. Now, also coming up, Natasha Raymer is going to be having her Moscow Nights presentation uh, this year. It's going to be involving a number of singers. She has uh, Teresa Tova, Aleta, and uh, also a guitarist and uh, a pianist who are going to be performing. That's going to be Vadim uh, Kolpakov on guitar and Br Boris Fogel on piano, along with John Joyce uh, playing uh, on the piano. That's Moscow Nights presents Jewish and Russian songs from World War II, Longing for Peace and Home. And the first act will be, if you will, uh, at uh, the Gates of Prayer Synagogue, and then they're going to move it okay. to the Maroney Opera All House. Right. All right. Thank you so much. And one of the highlights of this weekend's New Orleans Film and Video Festival is a 95-minute documentary called One Note at a Time. Filmmaker Renee Edwards takes a look at the status of many New Orleans musicians since Katrina. In this excerpt, songwriter, singer Bud Homer, Tud Power rather, has composed a song about.
about the importance of the New Orleans Musicians Clinic and how essential it is for us to take care of each other. First, you'll hear from Tower himself, and then from rhythm and blues legend Irma Thomas, and then from longtime bass player Walter Payton Jr. Jesus Christ, I'm trying, but I need help right now. That's the way we look at it here in New Orleans. I've always looked at it that way. When you, you're here temporarily, you're just passing through and you're, you're an entity that's doing what you can while you're here. Your permanent home is when you die. So he's not ready to go home, which is his permanent home, is when he died. He's not ready to die, it's another way of phrasing it. He says he's not ready to go home. Oh, send me an angel, but please don't take me home. Oh, send me an angel. It's something about playing music. They say it combs the, the savage beats, it also it heals people. When I get to the gig and I get on stage, I'm well. <laughs> Lots and lots of times, after the concerts and people come up and talk to us, say, the music really made me feel good. I haven't felt like this in a long time. Oh, uh, I didn't know music could make you feel so good. You know, just little comments like that. And you realize you touched somebody. <laughs> Is so missed. Uh, one note at a time will be screened this Sunday at 4.15 at the Aquarium of the Americas. The film festival runs through next Thursday, October the 20th, and you can visit the website to see the entire lineup. Now it's time for our picks. Ricky. Uh, Becky Allen is going to be in Jacoby's uh, Nutcracker this Christmas with little children running out of her dress. you got to see it. <laughs> Just remember the Crescent City Farmer's Market on Saturdays is moved, 750 Carondelet Street on Saturdays. Go check it out. It's great. And if you saw us drinking the champagne, made you thirsty, Brennan's Restaurant on Royal Street is doing their national, excuse me, global champagne day starting next Friday, going all through oh. the weekend. Check out their website. Thank you, videos. John. And if you're in Baton Rouge and the football game's not going well, go to the Louisiana <laughs> Art and Science Museum for Lovely as a Tree. It's an exhibit artists from all over the world, including the two of our own, Don Dado and oh, Ron Bechet. Good. Mm -hmm. Alan. Okay, Mark Hortelli is presenting Steve Grant, who's a country singer. Two shows next weekend at the Cafe Estambul in the New Orleans Healing Center. Mm -hmm. And coming up, Carol Sutton and James Bartell, both award-winning players, are going to be performing in the NOLA Project's 4,000 Miles of the Ache Cultural Arts Center. Okay, and the Louisiana Steam Train Association, they are hosting their annual Steam Fest. That's tomorrow and Sunday at the Audubon Fly, the Audubon Park Fly. That's going to be so much fun. And Hazel and the Delta Rambles will place there Sunday at 1 o'clock. And Wild Things, an outdoor celebration of the National Wildlife Refuge Week, takes place tomorrow at their Southeast Louisiana headquarters in Lacombe. Admission, boat rides, and all programs are free. And the Louisiana Landmark Society will hold their Fête de Jardin Sunday afternoon at Pitot House. Tickets are available now, and you can go to their website. Thanks for watching, and good night. Oh, my Speaking goodness. Look who's here. Global Star Satellite Communications, headquartered in Covington, Louisiana, connects the world. Global Star Satellite voice and data products offer remote communications for lone workers and backup communications during emergencies and disasters.
Global Star's products include Wi-Fi hotspots, tracking devices, and fixed and mobile phones. Be bold, be efficient, be heard. Global Star connects the world.